There are a lot of companies, probably most companies, where if you are of no value to them anymore, if you are unable to perform job duties anymore, despite a situation that is even beyond your, beyond your control, they will say, thank you for everything, but we wish you well in your future endeavors. Bye-bye. But you got to respect the way that the Ravens, they didn't do that with Zach Orr. Uh, with Zachary Orr, he was somebody that was an undrafted rookie free agent, I believe, from Texas. Uh, he came to the Ravens, started on special teams, but then earned a starting spot. Um, and he came in 2014. Shout out to Mike McDonald. That's when he came in 2014 as an intern. So I guess they're getting all the band back together. But Zachary Orr came in 2014, and he quickly made his mark uh, the following year as a starting linebacker for the squad. Um, but then in 2017, timing is everything. We always talk about it. He got placed on injury reserve. Now, I, I don't remember exactly what he got placed on injury reserve for, but I do remember that while he was on injury reserve, I think they were checking on one thing, but then they found out that about his neck injury. And with his neck injury, it was something that ended up being a lot more serious than they initially thought, and it ended up being career-threatening. And then it did end up eventually ending his career um, because and, and it's, it's just crazy the timing the way that it worked out because it's best that he knew he it's best that they found out about this injury off the field rather than on it because that could have been a really scary situation to find out about a neck injury on the field because I yeah that, that could have been really bad but it worked out so then Zachary Orr he, he tried to make a comeback. He kind of semi-retired, but then he was like, oh, you know what? No, 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 I'm going to try to make a comeback. So he went around, visited a couple teams, but nobody would take the chance. No, nobody would take that risk of playing him and signing him to be a linebacker, even though they knew he could play. But the risk of that neck injury, is just it was just too much. So he ended up retiring. But did the Ravens just be like, all right, Zach, we wish you well in your future endeavors. Thanks, but ah, no, thank no, they didn't do that. They brought him on as an assistant coach. And this allowed him to make a transition to still be around the game that he loved, even though he couldn't play it anymore. But this allowed him to learn a new aspect, the business side, the coaching side of the National Football League and more specifically of the Baltimore Ravens. So they gave him that experience and they were like, hey, go flap your wings, birdie. Go do your thing. And then he ended up becoming the outside linebackers coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. But then there just so happened to be an opening uh, that opened up last week when the Ravens, they let Rob Ryan go. You know, Rex got to be somewhere looking at pictures of feet so upset that the Ravens let go his brother. But anyway, that opening, when, when they had that opening, a lot of Ravens fans were like, oh, Zachary Orr would be perfect for this. Zachary Orr just makes so much sense. Bring Zachary Orr back. And you almost thought it was one of those things. Well, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But a lot of times when some things, especially in the NFL, when they make so much sense, it's almost like they're too good to be true. But not this time. This time, Zachary Orr is coming back. After being off for a year, he's coming back to work with the Baltimore Ravens as their linebackers coach. Not outside linebackers, linebackers coach. So he gets a, a nice little promotion. So I'm happy for him. I'm happy for him that he, he, gets, to, he gets to return where it all started. Um, so this is a nice move. And this is one of those coaching moves that I feel like players would respect a little bit extra. And the reason I feel like they would respect it a little bit extra is because it's somebody that one played in the league. I feel like coaching, sometimes it can hit different when it comes from somebody that actually has that experience playing in the league. Number two, <laughs> not every coach that played in the league was a good player. But with Zachary Orr, he was a good player. So this, whatever he can teach to the linebackers, it can give them a point of view of somebody that had success in the NFL using his strategies, using different things that, that allowed him to have success uh, when he played. And then on top of that, he does have some coaching experience now. And, and see, with this whole thing, you can think both short and long term. Because short term, yeah, you get to be a linebacker's coach. 
But then in the future, whether it's with the Ravens or whether it's with somebody else, you'll get to actually be a defensive coordinator. And it could end up being one of those things where he takes that Mike McDonald route where he's in the league for a couple of years as a linebacker's coach and then he bounces over and goes to the collegiate ranks to be a defensive coordinator. Or he could do it in the NFL. We've seen that happen plenty of times before too where guys will be linebacker coaches, defensive back coaches, whatever coaches, and then they end up getting promoted to be a defensive coordinator in the league, whether it be with their current team or with another team. So if he does well, with these linebackers, and you know, Ravens, they kind of got uh, an, an M.O. when it comes to their linebackers. And last year, that M.O. was just, it was off. It was way off. But if he can do his thing with the linebackers, that'll set him up for success in the future. And, and to see the success of the linebackers, it will be clear as day from jump and obviously throughout the season. If he's doing a great job... And they're taking everything that he's teaching them and they're executing as well. We'll be able to tell because last year we could tell. And it was rough. It was really rough. I know right now going into his third season, there is an immense amount of pressure on one Patrick Queen. Him going into his third season, a lot of people are looking at Patrick Queen like, all right, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? Because early on in the season, he struggled. And then they, they, they changed his responsibility a bit, moved him around a bit. And I was like, oh, okay, there we go. That's the Patrick Queen that we love. That's the one that we want to see. That's that potential. They drawn that potential out of him because we know he got it. But he just got to turn it on. But then toward the end of the season, it kind of got a little up and down. But the, the thing with Patrick Queen... We, we know it's there. We know it's there. You just got to bring it out just a bit more. Because you see, nobody's asking him to be Ray Lewis. And, and that's something that's just so unfair to so many linebackers that have come after Ray Lewis. Because they're always, they're always going to get, especially first round picks, they're always going to get compared to Ray Lewis. It's, it's always going to happen. It's not fair to them. But it's always going to happen. And that's Ray Lewis's fault. Blame him for being so good at what he did as a linebacker. Because the first round picks after him, was, it was C.J. Mosley and it was uh, Patrick Queen. So with that being said, um, he, uh, he, he has some improvements to make. But this is a big step in the right direction for Patrick Queen, for Malik Harrison. And for whatever other else uh, linebackers are going to be there, whether they bring Josh Bynes back or not, whether they bring LJ Fort back or not, I'm sure they'll look to the draft too. There's Christian Welch as well. Uh, Atara Alaka, I'm not sure what his status is, but that's a possibility. There's Chris Board as well. So they have some options and some different things that they could do. And then, of course, there's free agency. But the linebacker unit is it's a unit that... I feel ha has not really gotten as much attention as it needs to have gotten because it but, but it, it, it warrants attention because the Ravens definitely need to improve there. They need to take some steps forward there because linebacker for them this year overall as a whole, as a unit, it was it was up and down. It was up and down. I would say it, it was inconsistent. They made some plays. They didn't make some plays. They missed some plays. It, it was a little bit all over the place. But, again, you, you know that potential is there. Like my guy Sutton Def said uh, about a year and change ago about Patrick, uh, Patrick Queen and Malik Harrison, he called them uh, thunder, that being Malik Harrison, for being able to lay the boom and lightning. Patrick Queen for that crazy speed. Called him Thunder and Lightning. Now that stuck with me because it was just such a great comparison. But now we want to see that translate in both of their third years, as a matter of fact. So let's hope that Zachary Orr can be the start of something special uh, when it comes to the Ravens and their linebackers. Because he, again, he was looking like he was going to be something special in the NFL. But then due to unforeseen circumstances with his neck injury, it all came crashing down. But 
Shout out to the Ravens for not just throwing him away, not just kicking him to the curb, not being like, all right, Zachary, well, we wish you well in your future endeavors. No, they gave him, him an opportunity, and now that opportunity is coming full circle. It's coming full circle. So now he's back to where everything started. So team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Make sure you don't burn your bridges. Try your best in every situation not to burn your bridges. Because people remember, employers, they remember, companies remember. They keep all that stuff on record. You know they do. And even though it, it's great to forgive, forgiveness is, it is the best. Because when you forgive somebody, then it's just a weight that's lifted off of you, off of them, and y'all can both move forward. Even if y'all choose not to remain friends or buddies anymore or what, what not. But if you forgive somebody, that lets that burden go. But please, don't, don't burn your bridges. Try not to. Because you just never know when you might not need to cross them again. I love y'all. We out.